All right, welcome everybody to part right. two of our four-part series, and I am not going to clog up the space anymore. Beth, welcome. Take it away. All righty. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. So we are here today, got to remember what day of the week it is. Um, we're here today to talk about resources and strategies to support early writing development in young children with disabilities. And the slide, de uh, the slide deck, you guys can access that. And today I did remember to share it before, although somebody will, of course, let me know in the in, this, in the chat, if I didn't for some reason, um, I'll tell you like just the briefest things about myself so that we have time to get to the meat of it. But I am a recently retired um, uh, speech language pathologist and then finally um, administrator with Montgomery County Public Schools in Maryland. And I am currently employed with Lesson Picks, but this is not a Lesson Picks presentation. I might show a few things in here from Lesson Picks, but everything if I show it to you from Lesson Picks today will be completely free. This is not a Lesson Picks ad. Um, I'm gonna show you lots of cool things that you all can do to support young children and even not so young children, um, but those who are at the emergent writing level. But I am trying to focus on our youngest learners so that we can get them started um, off on a, on a good foot so that they're not still at the emergent writing level as they grow older. You can get the slides from the bit.ly backslash NJ writing, or you can use the QR code. And Mike has got that in the, um, he's got the bit.ly in the um, chat. So if I move on and you're like, wait, I didn't get it, just go scroll in the chat and you should be able to find it. Um, Alrighty, so yes, you can get me, and people did, a couple people reached out to me about different things. You can email me at postbeth at gmail. You can find me on Twitter and feel free to tweet out. Um, great things that you're learning. That's how we share the wealth um, on Twitter. And um, you're welcome. I finally figured out how to put my first name first and my last name last in Instagram. So I'm um, at Beth Poss on Instagram. So let's talk a little bit about early writing and just the, um, the, the, um, uh, how early writing starts. I lost my words there for a minute. What kind of speech language pathologist am I? So really early writing starts off with Drawing. So drawing is our children's way of writing um, when they are young. And then it moves into scribbling, right? And then that scribbling can become refined from like just like circles and random marks on a page to wavy scribbles. And really that is how children are imitating what they are seeing handwritten um, from adults. And then it starts turning into letter-like forms. They'll, you'll start seeing some things that may look like actual letters in there. Um, and we're talking about typical development. This is, this is typical development, right? And then you'll start seeing some letter strings where kids will start putting a couple of letters together. They may or may not be real words. They may or may not have any meaning. It just may be things that they're seeing um, around. It may be letters from their name. Then they move into this transitional writing where they actually are starting to learn a little bit of the conventions, like they know their space is there somewhere and that letters go together. Um, they may even copy things that they see in environmental print or be using the letters in their name as they're becoming more aware of it. As students really do start writing, we see that invented spelling, right? Phonetic spelling, invented spelling. Um, <clears throat> and then students start moving into that beginning word and phrase writing, and then ultimately they get to conventional spelling and sentence writing, which is what we want. Um, there's the link in this um, that is to an article that takes you through this from um, the National Association of Education of Young Children. It's a great article. It's a wonderful article to provide parents um, as well as other people that you might be working with. And then some additional resources. Um, I talked about these last um, week earlier this week. I can't even keep track of what week it is, what day it is. Um, I'll put them in the window so you can see I'm not on my screen, but in the window. The um, No More Teaching Letter of the Week, which is an awesome short book um, that has some great resources around early reading and writing. And it is geared towards um, typical development, but it's an excellent, excellent resource. And then um, the Copenhaver Erickson and Copenhaver book, um, Comprehensive Literacy Instruction for All Teaching Students with Specific, uh, with Significant Disabilities to Read and Write, which has wonderful ideas regardless of the level of um, that your students might be at. 
Um, so just um, can kind of keep that in your mind as we go through this. So let's talk a little bit about scribbling and let's talk about the different ways that our students who may not be able to hold a conventional pencil or crayon or marker or other writing implement might be able to start scribbling. Um, and um, and so really, if you were on last week with me and we talked about the um, app magnetic alphabet, that might be one way that kids are starting to scribble. They might scribble and whether it's real, I've got like a handful of like real magnetic letters here um, in my hand. I'm not turning on my camera on my iPad just yet. I can only juggle so many things at one time. So you could have you know, this is what I know I did with my kids is I had magnetic letters on my refrigerator, which is, of course is stainless steel and doesn't work so well. But it might work on the side of your tub if it's a metal tub. It might work. Um, there's other places that you can find. You can certainly find magnetic, um, other magnetic surfaces like a cookie sheet um, to be able to. So put those letters out there for um, students with disabilities to push around because that gross motor, that fine motor that they can do with pushing those letters around may be easier than holding that and encourage them. And it doesn't have to be, let it be scribbling. It doesn't have to be real words that they're making. It could be that they're doing some digital scribbling with the magnetic um, alphabet. And let me see if I can pull that up just because I know not everybody was here on last week when I did this. So this is one of my favorite apps. This is an iPad app. It is also available um, uh, Android. So it's great. Um, there's a light version that's totally free. Um, but I have and to do all of this that I'm showing you, you don't need the paid for version. The paid for version just has like more funky backgrounds and it has all these just for people to see. It has all of these different um, sticker sets and such. Um, but not, you don't need that, right? You don't have to have that. We just really care about having these letters, the uppercase and the lowercase letters. So get kids, let them just, you know, pull some letters on them and move them around. Don't worry about what they're spelling or not spelling, or we talked about a sorting activity last week where you could sort by color and, and, um, and names, uh, uh, color and shapes and all of that, you don't have to worry about it. Just let them get in there and play. Um, and Mike is saying modify magnetic letters with various handles for students with physical disabilities. Yes, absolutely. Um, and I am going to be talking about, so Elizabeth is asking, so some of this would be students who have those physical disabilities. So they may be able to swipe on the iPad screen, right? Um, and so with a very broad, so I'm, I, you can't see me doing it necessarily. Oops, let's go to that. Um, but they may be able to swipe with a fairly broad swipe um, and be able to pull some letters on, even just tapping some of those letters to bring them on and to be able to move them around. So having that. But yes, we're going to be talking about some various things that you would be able to use. Um, some other things, let me move this, my iPad off the screen for a second. Um, some other things I am going to show you guys, um, some keyboard, uh, some apps that you can access on any device that where they can have um, scanning keyboard apps and everything. That app is called, Howard, it is called Magnetic Alphabet. I know it's like, couldn't get much simpler than that. It is called, if you search Magnetic Alphabet on the Chrome, on your Chrome store, um, and I have it on my Chromebook as well, um, or on iOS in the App Store, you will find it, Magnetic Alphabet. There is another one also that is um, by the folks, it's by a Montessori group that um, I don't have it up on my screen, which is fun too. It has the, it makes the letter sounds. And so that might be a valuable app for some kids. Sometimes I like to go with less bells and whistles, but the other one that is the magnetic um, alphabet app that is from the Montessori group um, will like, when they touch the letter, it'll say its name. When they put two letters together, it'll like say the letter sounds, which is cool, um, is very cool, but I don't have that one up just yet. That's okay though because we're gonna keep going. Um, I have a quick, this is literally like a 90 second video. It is not the best, I, I, it's, a, it's a perfectly well filmed video. Um, there's so many things that um, I would even look at um, in this that I could even expand on, but it's just a really short um, video of a young girl um, with a disability appears to be Down syndrome who is working with her teacher and another adult um, and she's scribbling. And I just want you to look at how she is attributing um, meaning to the writing. Make sure that the Wow, what is it? Yeah, Can you tell me? 
An umbrella? Yeah, yeah. Making an umbrella. Okay. That's what they needed in our book today. In the Napping House book, they needed an umbrella. Yeah. 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 So it was in that very quick video, but what I wanted to point out to you, one of the things that the adult there with the communication book even says um, is uh, she says, oh, you even wrote the letter. And if you, if you're able to look and see, she's not, she didn't, she's, she is attributing meaning. She's saying you wrote the letter. What did you write? Oh, umbrella. The way that they're responding, they're giving her the communication book to be able to discuss what they're doing. Um, that kind of, that kind of um, discussion around writing um, is real important. It's critical what, when we're working with our children. So one of the strategies that we want to talk about today is my, I'm giving myself the royal we that I want to talk about today is modeling writing all day long, right? Um, when you are writing things in your classroom with your child, in your Zoom sessions, and whatever it is that you're doing, when you're writing, you want to be thinking aloud and talking about the process that you're going through so that you're thinking, oh, what does this word, hmm, I'm, I want to write the word rainbow and rainbow, I'm going to think about that. Oh, okay, I finished that word, I'm going to um, move, uh, I need to make them space because I'm going to start my next word. Even if these are things that you are not yet expecting from your children or from your students, you want to make sure that you're drawing their attention and you're modeling. It's very much like when we model with communication where we're all, always modeling like one step ahead of where that child is, we're expanding on it. We want to do the same thing when we're writing. Um, and read aloud each word as you're writing. Um, and I'm going to show you some, some real concrete examples of some different resources and tools that you can do these with, with technology and low tech also. But look for all of those opportunities for um, children to write their names or for like the sign in, sign up, sign out. So we're all used to kids having to sign in right when they're in pre-K and they come into the classroom and everything, but have them sign in for things, but then also have them sign up for stuff and not just lunch. And then make sure they're signing out. Give them lots and lots of opportunities to write their name or to use their name and with whatever it is. And if it's a label for their name, that's great. If it is putting the magnetic letters of their name, if it's an adapted keyboard, all of those things. So your morning message, most um, preschool teachers will have some sort of, a, or an early childhood teachers will have some sort of a morning message. Don't write that all out beforehand if you can. Like if you can write at least part of that message, if not all of that, um, during your time, you're going to be modeling that for students. And then we want to do lots of making lists, and I'm going to show you some resources for that. So let's talk a little bit more about shared writing. Um, oops, did I? Yeah, we're going to talk about shared writing and we're going to talk about modeled writing. I was trying to think like, what, where did I have that? Um, let's talk a little bit about shared writing um, and modeled writing with Tar Hill Reader. Um, so we looked at Tar Hill Reader on Tuesday um, and um, or Thursday or whatever day I spoke to you guys. Maybe it was Friday. I can't keep track. Seriously. Um, I think it was Friday. And we looked at it for books, to find books, right? We looked at a G book and we talked about alphabet books. But Tar Heel Reader can be so powerful as a writing tool. Um, and I have, this is the screen where you go to when you are, are writing a book. And I'm gonna actually go into, uh, go into that right now. So I'm in Tar Heel Reader. You do have to get a login as opposed to when you use Tar Heel simply for, um, uh, as you opposed to use it, you don't have to have any kind of login when you're just reading books on it. You do have to create a login when you're writing books in it. And it's just their way of, of keeping it from being like overly spammed or anything like that. But the cool thing is, is that it uses images from copyright free images um, from uh, or Creative Commons images from Flickr, from the website Flickr, F-L-I-C-K-R. Um, and it um, yeah. So it allows you to pull up a whole bunch. So you could be sitting with your kids and saying, all right, we're going to start writing about, hmm, I know, let's write about candy that we like. So whatever the topic is that you've decided, k -k -k candy, k -k -k. I'm going to put my C-A-N-D, helps if I can type in public, and then we're going to search and we can look. 
And then I get all these images that come up and we can talk about this, right? We can be going through um, and we can be deciding, well, what pictures do I want to, to use? And so we could click on them and we could be, somebody could be like, yes, let's definitely do our gummy worm. So should we add these to the book? Uh, yeah, decide, we're gonna add these to the book. I just click on add to the book. And then I can go and I can look at the next picture. Oh, do we wanna add these? And kids can say yes or no, I don't like those candies at all. No, I don't like those. No, I don't like those. Oh, gumballs, let's add those to the book, right? Kids could be calling out, oh, fruit chews, those are gross. Oh, I don't like those either. M&Ms, let's add those to the book, right? So I'm just going along by cl simply clicking next here. I could have students helping me with this. Lots of different ways that I can um, support this, okay? So we could be going in and, oh, yeah, let's add that caramel apple to the book. That looks so good. Um, we could add some gummy worms. All right, so once we get the pictures that we want, we have our pages for each book. You can upload your own images to this as well. But I think it's really powerful when we go, if I wanted more, like if I wanted to find something else, I could get, oh, look, now we can get some chocolate or we can get, you know, some candy corn or whatever. So we can look for some other things. So now every set, every page, now we get to write together. So simply by clicking on that image, I can get to every page and I can put in. And this could be like, I like, and we could have those students, guh, 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 guh. Guh. What does gummy worms stand? Guh, guh, guh. Oh, I can get that. What is the next sound? Guh, uh, um, right? Gummy worms. So we could be taking students through that process. They could be generating, they could be using your augmentative communication devices to be telling us the sounds that they're making. They could be pointing, they could be using eye gaze, all of these things, right? So now I can keep going with this. Um, and go on to my next image, right? Now, the nice thing about this is this is completely switch accessible. So if I had a student that I was doing this with, they would be able to also um, get in and be, be able to utilize this. So I could keep going in. I like uh, gumballs. So whatever, I, again, I'd be modeling those sounds and all of that. I, I don't want to use our whole time writing this one single book, right? So we'd be going through, I'd have all of my book, we'd choose who, what our title is, um, you know, I like, and that's where we could talk about, oh, when we have the title of a book, we need to capitalize all the words in that um, title, I like candy. So we're gonna capitalize I, we're gonna capitalize like, we're gonna capitalize candy. We need to capitalize the names, right? All of that. We can choose the language that it's in. We're writing this in English and we can categorize that book so that this is gonna be a, uh, a food book, right? So we can do, we can choose to do that. We can give it an audience rating. It's gonna be E for everyone. There are C books for caution that are written by and for adults and teens, and there's a reason for it. We can choose if it is in that transitional. Um, you don't have to worry about that. And if I wanted to tag it, I can for easy. But then we're gonna publish it. I'm gonna save it as a draft right now. Um, but I'll, well, let me go ahead and show you just, and I'll delete it. It won't be published in every text has. So I, I have to specify the language. Every page has some text. But as we saw on the Tar Hill Reader, then this becomes a book that the class has written together that is fully accessible. Um, so I'm not going to take the time to go in and do that with you right now. But again, that is that shared reading where we're working together and I'm modeling for that stu those students. So I do want to show you, uh, hopefully my iPad is still up. Nope, it's not. Let's try this one more time. Um, I'm going to get my, I'm going to get Pictello up. I just need to get my iPad back up on the screen. So give me two seconds um, to get into that screen mirroring. Um, anybody that um, is curious, I am using the Reflector app to be able to mirror my iPad um, wirelessly to my Mac computer. So there we go. Um, it is up and I can go into Pictello. Um, show all screens. There we go. Uh, and let me move this over so you can see it. Ta-da. All right. So we talked about alphabet books and things like that um, uh, uh, on Friday. Um, and please, anybody that missed Friday, go and look at the recording. Um, but when we also want to draw attention, one of the most salient first things that children learn to write is their name, become aware of the letters in the name. And you can use that in a lot of different ways. And so this is um, Morgan's name book. That is my daughter. 
from when she was a little girl. Um, but I'm so using this as an example, right? Um, and so I already created the title. Lincoln's um, name book. Already created that title page. But the idea with this is that for every letter, we're going to come up with um, a, every letter in her name, we're going to come up with a word for it, right? Um, so Morgan Nessie, which she absolutely is messy, but it doesn't have to be about her. It's just the idea that we're going to use the letters that are most salient to Morgan to work on that writing and that understanding of that sound um, and that M. And again, this would be a shared writing activity. Um, and just again, this is just an example of like O is for orange and that it can be inventively spelled. I do want to show you real quickly. That's like what the book looks like. But if I were to create it, um, I would go into edit and I could choose to do a new book. Um, but I'm just going to go in and edit this book um, just so I can show you. There is a wizard mode that takes you through it or there is an expert mode. Um, and so the wizard mode is obviously often um, a little bit easier. Easier. And we could go in and you simply, again, this would be something you could do together with a student because while the finished product is completely switch accessible, the actual programming is not necessary, right? Not necessarily. So you'd go in and you choose a photo from your photo library. So the next letter would be R. So we'd be going and looking through our photo library. I'd either preset it up with things with R depending on, you know, what I have available. And I'm not actually going to take you on a tour right now of all of my images. Um, oops, um, I bet I could go ahead and take a picture. Oh, I have a picture of a rock. So I'm going to go ahead and actually try this one more time. I can take a picture. You get to see my really nasty desk. But look, I have a picture of a rock. Um, I'm being so brave and letting you all see that. And so I've got my picture of a rock and we could put that in and then we'd be able to go to next and put in that text, right? I can put in a top label and I could put, so I could put R and then we could put in R is R. for yes. four. Rock. And again, it's giving you one of the, so the upsides and the downsides. The screen mirroring app is called Reflector 3. Um, but the downsides and the upsides of this is that it has the text to speech automatically, it pulls up the um, word prediction automatically. Um, I would actually advocate for turning off the word prediction so that that student can be helping you inventively spell right um so that we could have this now if there was whatever access method you have on your ipad that student would be able to use that access method for their typing as well so i would advocate for you know being able to do that inventive spelling for that right not to just have it okay so that is um pictello keeping an eye on the time um all right, um, one more that I want to show you, um, and this is an, this is like a, was a new one for me uh, from the last couple of months. It is called Write Reader. It is available um, web-based. It is also available as an installed app on iOS. Um, and let me take you into it. it I, what I really like is it has a lot of opportunities for independent writing, where you would let the student be doing their inventive spelling, doing their independent writing. Um, but, and then you could go in afterwards and, and it's re that's really important that after the student writes, you can go in and add the transcribed text that the te student tells you what it is um, in as a model and that they can record. So let's go into it. Let's look at this little, you might have noticed a theme. We're doing either summer or food today. It just lets you know where I am at. So I could, this was, I started with this book already. I could I'm going to edit this book. Um, I could have gone and added a brand new book. We can talk about full pages or multi pages. Um, so let's go ahead and go in and take a look um, and let's do a little bit of writing. The cool thing about this is when I click to add an image, it takes me in. This is where a student can really be independent. It takes me in. I don't need to be able to read to find pictures. I can go across and be like, oh, I'm going to write about summer. Let's see what's out there. Let's find like that cool picture, okay? So we've got it. There's the literacy that you need is you do not need literacy in order to be able to engage with this and then they can get in and it can be flat out scribbling or maybe we can get them into some wah 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 water right so we could do it 
I can record my voice in there with it so that student can record. They can also, I love this, that they can put, they can make um, captions or dialogue for it, right? So I could be, she's saying, whoops, um, trying to get, it's not letting me, I don't know why it's not letting me right there. I'm not gonna worry about, oh, there we go. Wee, okay, so I can click save. So I have all of these opportunities for writing for that student. Let the student be independent with it, model with them how to do it, but let them be independent. Then once they've written their book, then that adult can come along. And so we've got the kid piece and we've got the adult piece and the educators say, well, what? Tell me, let's record it. What did you write? Perfect, I'm going to go ahead. And they've said, I like to go on the slide. The slide is fun. And then that educator, I like to go, or that adult on the slide. Uh, and you'd be modeling the, I'm gonna use a capital. You're never telling the student they did it wrong. You're just showing you, well, this is how I'm gonna write it. I, I heard what you wrote, now I'm gonna write it too. The slide is fun. Oh, I think I might even use an exclamation point with that, right? So now I have it, we can read that book. Okay, and we have what the student wrote and if there was anything that I'd recorded, they'd be able to play that. Um, and, and be able to do that. So again, it's really powerful. It's not about having the perfect thing. I don't even, to be honest, you don't even necessarily always have to do this, this end of it, but that's where you can have that, where you are taking and honoring what that student right. You're never saying, no, 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 it was wrong. Um, when they're at that emergent level, you're, you're giving them that power that they are seeing themselves as a writer. Um, another strategy um, is, um, uh, or another, another genre that we want to talk about is poetry. And I want to talk about a strategy. And I know we're like getting close to 1230, but we're going to go to 1245, guys. I'm just letting you know. Um, is a nine word poems. This is adapted from a strategy from Caroline, the fabulous Carol, Dr. Caroline Musselwhite. Um, I've adapted it a little bit for younger students. Um, she talks about this with a little bit older students. Um, and it's where students pick a topic. Um, and then they define it by writing, okay? And in hers, it talks about three nouns, three verbs, three adjectives, adverbs, or adverbs. I'm gonna talk about it because our younger children might not know. We would say, we could say nouns, which are things that you can see, that you see at the beach, right? Or you hear at the beach, um, or that you touch at the beach, right? Um, if they chose beach. I'm on my summer kick right now. Um, three verbs, things, what are three things that you can do? And so we would write that, we would transcribe it. This is, of course, all perfectly written. It's none of the inventive language, but it's up there as a model. Um, not a model for the children, a model for you guys. Um, and what are three things that you might say? And then that student gets to um, do it. You could see how this could work really effectively with an augmentative communication device um, where they'd be able to pull up that language. It can be an oral, it can be a written, but it's, um, it's condensed. It's not looking for sentences. It's looking for short and sweet, but yet they get a really um, fabulous um, poem from it. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about predictable chart writing um, as a strategy, and that is where you have a sentence starter, and you might even have that sentence starter already filled out, summer is, and I have this right now up on um, Clicker Writer, um, which is um, from Crick. It is the new version of their apps that they've had and their old uh, version of their Clicker 7, but now it is Clicker Writer. It goes across um, desktops or laptops, either Mac or PC, it's available um, on Chrome, and I'm gonna show you guys on the iPad. It integrates, when if you've used the Chrome or the iPad apps before, it integrates all of the apps back into one total tool, um, which is um, wonderful. So it starts out this particular grid, I have started off with some pictures, um, obviously with summer, so that we could just have some inspiration for our writing. Oh, it doesn't work when you click on the mouse on, the image when it's actually on your iPad. There we go, let's touch the iPad. So I could put some images in there. And then I have multiple um, grids up there, right? So I can slide over and we can have our summer is. So we've got our summer is, I can have the voice set so it'll speak it or it'll speak it afterwards. But what I really like about this is that I could have those sentence starters on there, but that a keyboard is always, always, always available. I could have the keyboard be an ABC keyboard or a QWERTY keyboard. It can be scanning, um, on different scanning versions like two-step switch scanning. Um, I can have the keyboard set up different ways for access. So however the students access is, they can do it. And again, we can get- Summer is us. 
that we can get into all of that scribbling, right? Um, all of that scribbling, all of that, let's go back a little bit, all of that, you know, we could get into our, you know, let's, let's think about it. Maybe the student says, um, summer is the beach, and we could say, oh, beach, buh, buh. what sound do you hear with beach, right? So we could get into that, and then it has the text to speech. Um, you won't worry about my spelling, of course. Summer is beach. And I can have the setup different ways. Is it going to say it on, um, is it going to say it as the student's talking? Am I not going to have speech at all? Is it going to say it on punctuation? Um, again, what I, the student had dictated it to me, I would not have fixed it to say beach correctly. We would have written what they had said, and we could have talked about it afterwards. So that is clicker writer. Uh, move this along, because I have a few more things I want to make sure to get. Um, remnant book writing. So remnant book, I talked on Friday about squishy books, which is like, again, from the reading perspective of putting um, lots of tactile things using plastic bags and creating textural tactile books for students to engage with. The flip side of that is remnant book writing. It is a strategy that is wonderful for students with um, visual impairments. Um, it's the idea that you are Students are writing about things where they have remnants of it to put. So if it was this example here is my turn to hurry the birds today, there's some bird seed. You would have taken that bird seed, put it in, that's like a pencil pouch thing. You could have put it in a Ziploc baggie, whatever it is. You would have written the information either with the student or what was dictated to you in um, and put it in there with that text. So that text is in sitting inside with those remnants. Um, it can be souvenirs like objects from activities like from a nature walk or a science experiment. Um, it can be ticket stubs from the movies that they went to. Um, we still get ticket stubs. Um, uh, it, so it's similar to the squishy books, but this as opposed to the squishy books where you might be writing them as the adult, this is something where it is written by the student and it can be very powerful again for those with visual impairments um, to be able to have that tactile component. Um, we looked at this book, this Action ABC book, um, which is a lesson picks. It's a free book in there. Um, and I wanted to make sure I came back to it. I, when I created this book, so it was a book for students to read in ABC, but I created the lines there that so that then students would have the opportunity to practice writing um, with that um, with that. So whether it's writing the letter A, whether it's ask a question, whether it's practicing question marks, whether it is they want to ask what kinds of questions can you ask? How do you do this? Whatever it is that you want those students to focus on with their writing is so giving them a book that then they can actually mark up. Um, and be able to um, do that. Thank you, Jenna, for putting that in there. Um, we want to encourage writing everywhere. It's not just during writing time, and it's not just at the writing center. So at your science center, have clipboards to record observations. And here is an example of that. This is, again, this is a free download from Lesson Picks. You do not need to be a subscriber. Um, and it's one of our, uh, the life cycle, it's one of our, our note-taking templates. Um, again, this is not, this is not, this is for students to do whatever their level of writing is, right? So there's some picture cues, so it might talk to help them think about like what they're looking for, but it is for them to write whatever it is they're gonna write in whatever format they have. Um, we wanna make sure that in the blocks, put letters on blocks. Um, and so that students as they're playing with blocks can create words with it. Have graph paper so that students can draw blueprints of their block designs that they're creating. Have craft sticks out there so that students can write on those um, for road signs. And um, one of my all-time favorite things, I'm showing it in the my video window, not on the screen right now, is a label maker, is have label maker places so that students can do their digital scribbling um, as well um, and be able to print. So you have students that might not be able to hold that marker, but might be able to access the keyboard on a, um, on a label maker. And the label maker gives that um, instant um, gratification of being able to have it printed right then and there by the student, as opposed to having to send something to like the printer in the classroom. So I really love label makers. Um, 
So outdoor, um, in, the, in the dramatic play corner, have shopping lists and create menus and prescription pads, letters for the post office, depending what it is. I have a lunch menu here and I want you guys to notice that on that lunch menu, I have pictures of food, but I don't have any text on there. So when I created this, this is a free download in Lesson Picks. When I created this, I didn't want the text there. I deleted the text, okay? And the idea is that the student is gonna write whatever it is, that maybe they're gonna write cheeseburger or pizza or drumstick, or maybe they're gonna write the name of the friend that's ordering it from them, whatever it is. So I'm not imposing text. It's not for them to copy. I don't have dotted lines. There's a place and a time for working on letter formation, but that's not what our um, emergent writing is about. Outdoor play, have sidewalk chalk, um, uh, magnifying glasses and notepads so they can take observations and be scientists and um, have materials so they can create a map, use um, painting with water, whatever it is. In your sensory table, it's a great place to have your magnetic letters there, right? And some cookie sheets. Um, have sandpaper letters. Don't have sandpaper letters and water or shaving cream. That is not necessarily a great combination. But again, have tactile things. If you've got access um, to a 3D printer, you know, there's all sorts of things that you can make there. So have those writing opportunities everywhere that students are. Um, I did want to talk a little bit about some best practices for students who um, maybe have the most significant physical disabilities and looking at um, color coding um, for eye gaze and alphabet eye gaze. We want to make sure that we are always giving students access to, um, to the alphabet, okay? Um, not simply to words, um, whole words for them to be able to do writing. So this is one, it is out of the university. I forgot to link it. I will go back into this and I will link it, I promise, to the um, University of North Carolina Center for Disability Studies. It tells you exactly how to make it. It gives you the um, materials to be able to print and make it. Um, and it's the idea that it's color coding. So students look at the section with the letter that they want to write. So if I was looking, I'd look at the, I wanted that I there. I would look at that um, upper left hand corner. Um, and then the student would look at the color of the letter that they want. So then I would look at the blue of the um, large square of blue that's on the right. So I would first look at the area that I want to go, and then I'm going to look at the large version of the color that I'm going to go to. And then the communication partner confirms the selection and writes it. Um, I have another, I'm going to hold this up so I don't have to take the time. Let's see if we can make this. Where's my camera? There it is. Um, so this is a flip chart. So you could do some partner assisted scanning on it where I don't have quite as much on there. Um, and we'd be saying, okay, so we go through the letters. I would flip it. Um, I have it, each one starting with a, it's falling apart. I didn't have a chance to laminate this. Um, they go through, but one of the things that it has on here, which is real important, is that it has those conventions. So if I am dictating, this is where the student is dictating it, right? They're dictating it with their, by their pointing or their partner assisted scanning, um, E, F, G, H, right, the stop, tell me when, that can also have two finger space, um, erase that, I'm finished, and then, so we have that. So I'll put a link. Um, in, I didn't put the link in, but I'll put a link to the University of North Carolina Center for Disability Studies. There's um, uh, already in there ones that you can download and print to be able to do those. So just the reminders of what makes an effective early childhood app. I talked about this um, last week, um, but when we're looking at these apps, again, open-ended, um, promotes the literacy language. I want you to know none of the things I showed you are drill and practice. None of them are practice writing my letters. They are all, oh, thank you so much, Megan, for putting that in there. And I will put it in the power, in the Google Slides. Um, we want to encourage movement. Um, we want to um, engage in interactions with peers. Um, we want it to be culturally diverse and free of stereotypes. I'm gonna talk more about that, um, This all of this effective early childhood app, when we do our language one, which is not next, which is not Thursday, but is the week after that. Um, and meets a developmental need. So I wanna, if there's any time for questions, I want to make sure um, I've answered them. Um, Please join me on Thursday. We're going to talk about problem solving and mathematics. And June 9th, we're going to talk about communication. We're going to not talk about communication apps. It is not a presentation on AAC apps. It is a presentation on apps and activities um, that 
can be accessible so that you can stimulate communication and language and to use alongside um, communication apps. So not a, it is not about communication apps, it is about um, apps and uh, resources to um, um, build language for those AAC users or those students with emergent um, language skills. Um, so I wanna make sure if there was any questions that I missed in the chat. So we've got the recording, um, somebody put that in, the screen mirroring app. Um, but if anybody has, I gotta learn to talk a little bit slower or take a deep <laughs> breath, but we're good. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> Woo, it's, a, it's like a roller coaster ride, isn't it, Mike? That's like bonus time. They just got bonus time. They I, got know. Bonus. I was going at 12.45. It was scheduled for a half hour. I said I was going at 12.45, and here it is, 12.41. That's it. Um, we, call that, we call that cut the split in the difference. Yes. Um, so there's the link for the webinars is right up in there. Um, if you scroll up, Mike has it there, AT4NJ. Um, so uh, again, if anybody has any questions about it, I am going to add the link for the um, I will make sure that I will add the link for um, for this and for the, um, the partner assisted scanning alphabet flipbook as well into the um, into the slide deck so that you have it. Everything else is linked. So if you want that lunch menu, if you want those butterfly life cycle notes, they're all there. The ABC action book is there. Um, the I don't have a link to the this because it's an app, but it's the clicker writer. Um, again, there's an ad link to the read writer. So all of that, let me see. There's a few new messages. I think it's mostly thank yous, but let me make sure. Oh, you're so sweet. Somebody, Teresa says, I'm phenomenal. You guys are such dolls. You guys are phenomenal for giving up some of your lunch, or I hope you ate your lunch, um, to, um, to listen with me. And we'll do, we're going to switch gears and talk about math on uh Friday. No, Thursday. We're going to switch here think, and talk right? about math on Thursday. Yep, for sure. So I hope you guys join me. I hope I'm not making anybody nauseous by flipping really fast <laughs> through my things so I can put up the link. There we go. Um, AT4NJ.org webinars. Um, have a great day and I hope I see lots of you on Thursday. Excellent. Thanks, Beth. Thanks, everybody. See you on Thursday. <laughs>